Hallelujah, hallelujah. All uh, praise and glory now unto the most high. On the creator and possessor of all things, can I be heard? Give me Yahoo up in the chat if I can be heard. Let me check myself real quick. Can I be heard? Oh, uh, yeah, we good, bread. Shabbat Shalom, my beloved family. Shabbat Shalom. All praise to the Most High. We eat the Most High loudest to see another one. Another Shabbat. I don't know about y'all, but I be looking forward. I be looking forward to the Sabbath. I ain't even gonna lie to you, boy. Whole week of physical and mental hustling. Strain on the mind and the body, you know what I mean? So all praises, glory, and honor. All right, another headquarter Friday. Y'all see what we got. You know, I know a lot of y'all happy and amped. We got a uh, sister Kamala Harris, a strong black woman, a sister, and a powerful VP nomination. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to jump into this topic because I know uh, it's an election year, you know, and uh, it amazes me how, how simple our people are at times, you know. I'm talking about no research. You don't look into nothing. You just, you know. So we're going to look into this. And even if you was into the whole, even if you are, should I say, into the whole uh, national voting thing, right? Well, at least you should be trying to pick a candidate whose morals and ideals align with yours, shouldn't you? I mean, if we just remove the skin color paradigm, they did. Shouldn't you at least be? And I'm speaking from a carnal perspective. I I know what it is. We gonna hit the scriptures in a minute. But from a carnal paradigm, a carnal perspective, should I say? If you were to choose a candidate, shouldn't their morals and their ideals line up with yours? I mean, this is Kamala Harris right here. This is a strong black sister, a strong black woman. Yes. If I ain't mistaken, she'll be the first, if her and old Sleepy Joe Biden, you know, Sleepy Joe Biden get elected, then, uh, She'll be the she'll be the first female black VP. Am I am I saying something wrong here? Hmm. Man, man, man. Hey, right, hold on, Aubrey. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You a lot of people be wanting to jump the gun. Hold on, hold on. She's a strong black woman. And a powerful, powerful VP nomination. So obviously we can be heard. I'll praise this glory now to the most. <laughs> Look at y'all. Y'all over here going in already. Uh, Joe Biden is a clown. <laughs> boy, that he can do look like abomination, don't he, boy? Oh, man. Let me go ahead and shout some of y'all out before we go ahead and get started. We got the opening prayer up on the screen. It'll be Psalm, the third chapter. And we're going to do us a little research today. We're just going to navigate. And we're going to see if you are in good graces with the most eye. Going out, breaking your high heels and ankles, trying to go vote. You did. All right, who are we got? I'm retired. Tell you, my brother from the West Coast. By Shalom, my brother, Aaron Jacobs. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Hebrew D. Feaster, Yeshaya, my dirty South brethren, blessings, bless up. Yamima Israel, bless up, sister, how you doing? Lisa B., Anaya Blur, Anaya Yehuda Blur, bless up, sister, how you doing? He knocks you to Israel, Shalom, hood, how you be, brother? Blessings, blessings, big O. Big old my brother old Uncle Obey is a strong sister, brother. <laughs> Ooh, man, man, man. All right, who else we got up in here? Let me see. My sister Alicia Edwards. Bless up to the house of your die L L Young, my KC brethren, mailman Malak Bon Yasha Allah. Bless up, King. How you be? Kila Olam Kazdo, bless up to the house of Troy Thomas and their, and their new bundle with joy, blessings. 
blessings and more blessings. Let me see what else we got up in there. All right. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, of high moral character. If you, I mean, if you just was someone that's carnal in the world and you was into this whole national voting thing, shouldn't whoever you voting for, their morals and their ideals should align with yours, right? Come on, man. Come on. You know, most of our people just run out there and just, especially with the whole thing started with Barack Hussein Obama. If you, just, you figured his skin was a little darker than the rest of the presidents, you just ran out there and voted. You ain't asked nothing about his politics. What is it he believe? It did. And when that uh, magazine came out, the first gay president, boy, boy, Nick Rose started moonwalking faster than Michael Jackson around her. <laughs> oh, man. Solomon Mack, bless up. $50 super chat, brother. Bless up to you and yours. Watchman Baruch, all those brothers, she locked up. <laughs> Boy, really? So you saying she made a career off locking up brothers, huh? Okay. Okay. She's a strong black woman, right? Just to say, they both clones, man. Look, this evil world in which uh artificial intelligence is about to be the new norm i don't put nothing past nothing yeah daughter she i'm not joking sister what you mean you glad i'm joking i ain't joking she a strong black woman black woman that's right he not do the run 28 still in full effect she was going in on old Sleepy Joe Biden, wasn't she, yo? Doing the Democratic primary. Now nah, they all good. Just like Hillary Clinton was going in on Barack Obama. Shame on you, Barack Obama. Shame on you. Then it was all, you know what I'm saying, hugs and fancy soliloquies and flowers. Dang. And I'm serious. She's a strong sister. All you sisters should be aiming to be like Kamala Harris, huh? This is a successful sister. <laughs> boy, boy, boy. Bless up. Bless up, everybody in the chat. Sister, get your chat. Masori, y'all, blessings. Bless up, my sister. Dang, sound like some of y'all done did y'all research around her. Dang. I may be, I got a confession, y'all. I may be guilty of clickbait on this one. <laughs> oh man, I even I even hashtagged her name. I might be guilty of clickbait on this one. I got a confession. Please forgive your brethren. <laughs> oh boy. Oh man. Okay, she's not your sister. Okay, okay. Okay. All right, y'all, let's pray on in real quick. Right, this wicked queen, Demarion Jacobs. I just pray on in, man. We're going to pray in with this Psalm, the third chapter. We're going to sit back and feast a little bit. We're going to do us a little research. All right. And then, of course, you know, we're going to hit a few scriptures and get her done. Uh, oh, man, the Irish. What the Irish got to do with this brother? Dang, I thought her father was Jamaican, man. I thought, I thought it was Jamaican. Uh, Bum McClellan. Sister, know it. Bless up, my sister. <laughs> this is a strong black woman, her, y'all. I don't know what y'all talk about. All right, y'all, let's face your rules and let's humble our minds. <sighs> Once again, and invite the spirit of the most high into our dwelling for where two or three are gathered. The Messiah is here in the midst. All right, let's get into this. Let's get into this. I had a conversation with a, a woman that called herself a woman in some authority today. She called herself trying to school me, talking about, oh, am I registered to vote? I said, look, I don't vote. She about spilled a coffee. Whoa, 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 whoa. Start stuttering. Whoa, 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 why not? I say, look, I'm here to handle some business. Once this business get handled, 
I love to have this conversation with you, but let's. I, I, I need you to focus on the business. I need you to handle real quick, and then we can have this conversation, y'all. Soon as I mentioned, as soon as I mentioned something that sound close to the Bible, oh, that's all you had to say. You know? And just she just shut the whole conversation down. I'm like, dang! I thought you wanted to know why a, a, a young man like myself wasn't voting. Oh, the madness. Bless up, Hadassah. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. All right, y'all. So let's get our prayer on. Our praise to the Most High. Forever live his son. In the hearts and minds of the faithful elect, another Shabbat. All right. This is Psalm, the third chapter. Psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. Yeah, get real. Mm. Yeah, how are, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say in my soul, there is no help for him in the most high. Say lie. But thou, Yahweh, are a shield for me. My glory and the lift up of mine head. I cried unto Yahweh with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy heal out of his holy heal say la straight up i laid me down and i slept i wait yahweh sustained me i will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about arise O most high save me O my power for thou hast smitten, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. <laughs> thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belong unto the most high. Thy blessing, thy blessed is upon your people. Say la. Hallelujah. Yah. Selah. <laughs> Yahoo, man, that was a powerful psalm. Nerd, David said, you done stole off. You smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Broken jaws. Most high hand, handed out broken jaw savages around her. Thou has broken the teeth of the ungodly. David said, I'm going to lay down and sleep good. When I wake, I ain't even surprised the most high sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people. That have set themselves against me round about. Let that mind be in you. Also in verse four, knows what he said. I cried unto the most high with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill or his holy mountain. You gotta know the most high has heard you. You gotta know it when you pray. When you finish praying, get up knowing that the most high is with you. It don't matter if 10,000s of people are surrounding you. You understand? Confidence. Confidence. Militant in mindset, spiritually speaking. And confident that the Most High is with you. All praise is glory and honor to the Most High. All praise is glory and honor to the Most High. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I right, see about 81 people up in the chat. Y'all go ahead and... uh. You know, get them likes up, share this with everybody you know, and tell them we talking about Kamala Harris tonight, our strong black woman and a powerful VP nomination. Let everybody know. And that lets you also know, y'all, your eyes can deceive you. You may at first glance be like, oh, that's a nice looking old sister. Born in the early 60s. Nice looking old little sister for age, huh? Let's see. Let's see if her morals and her ideals line up with you as a covenant keeper. First video we're going to go to. Black pastor destroys Kamala Harris. Must see. What say thee? And this is actually on my my beloved brother Nehemiah's channel. He put this up yes uh, today, actually. Check this out. I believe this is a 
pig meat and pasta from uh, California. Check this out. Can I get a witness? Don't you let him? Don't you let him? Because you see, these people have... Can y'all hear that? Let me know if y'all can hear that. I don't want nothing to sound muffled. I don't want nothing to sound muffled. Let me know if you can hear that. Strong black sister. Strong black woman. Strong. A good role model for the daughters of Zion. Huh? Can I get a witness? Don't you let, don't you let him. Because you see, these people have an agenda. And their agenda, one of the things, is to get rid of the church. To get rid of the church. To have abortion on demand. To the promotion of all things LBGTQ. You know, Kamala Harris, oh, she's uh, running for the vice presidency. I call her Miss Lockup a brother. For when she was the AG in California, a Negro knew a black man. He said, I call her Miss Lock Up a brother. <laughs> Miss Lock Up a brother. That's what he said he called her for when she was the attorney general. When she was the attorney general, you know what I mean, in California. This is what this pastor is saying. She's running for the vice presidency. You did pull that door right there. She said, I call that, I call her Miss Lock Up a brother. Watch this. A Negro knew, a black man knew that he would, I call her Miss Lock Up a brother. But when she was the AG in California, a, a Negro knew, a black man knew that he was dead in the water. He was dead in the water. Matter of fact, he said, a black man knew that he was dead in the water. If she was prosecuting the case, if she got your case, a brother knew that he was dead in the water. Y'all, this is a woman. We we gonna get to ethnicity in a minute, but y'all, this is a woman that made a career off locking up locking up our uh, poor misfortunate people that find themselves in certain circumstances. But whenever it's a situation between the haves and the have-nots, you can expect crime, y'all. Poverty is an equation. It's an equation. Look, these cities and these ghettos ain't there just by accident. It's an equation. These project buildings and all that ain't there by accident. It's an equation. And if there was no more crime, guess who's out of a job? She would be out of a job. She's not in the business of, of eradicating crime. If there are no more, if there's no more crime, all the prosecutors, all the attorney generals, all the police officers, guess what? They got to find another profession. All the judges, all the lawyers got to find another profession. So your mind is successful doing something for the community. Y'all look, don't fall for none of this. You know how many underhanded table deals and backroom deals get done? You know how you know how many prosecutors and defense attorneys, all oh, them be the same members of the same social and golf clubs. She made a living, she made a name off locking up your people. You dig? And the crazy part is on the surface, she looked like she could be you. This man just said this flat out. I call her Miss Lock Up a brother. Because a black man knew he was dead in the water. Oh, we. And again, if there's no crime, all of them are out of a job. So it, it pays for it to be crime. Yeah, yeah. You want to get on the brothers in the streets? Get on the politicians. Get on the politicians. There are true about this. There are there is no crime without corrupt politics. The streets is just the, the, the last phase of it. It trickles down to the streets. Without corrupt politics, there is no criminal activity. Mm, 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 mm. You need a trial. You might want to go to jail if you appear before her because she took pride in locking up that fool. And now all of a sudden she's trying to be 
be sister girl. I'm telling you, check out her record. She locked us up left and right. Yes, she he said, now nah, she's trying to be sister girl. Check out her record. She locked us up left and right. Some of y'all already got the stats. 87% incarceration rate. Oh, wait. That is serious. 87%? Man, I mean, you ain't got to, y'all, that's basically nine out of 10 cases you going to jail. Y'all, that's a higher incarceration rate than the feds. What up, son? What up? Shalom. Shabbat shalom. That's a higher incarceration rate than the feds. Nine out of 10 cases, she's victorious. She bragged about how she was one of the first to perform a same-sex marriage. Again, her ideals line with yours. Her morals and her ideals align with yours. Especially knowing we know as covenant keepers. Brothers and sisters of the faith. You understand? Trip off that. Evil is evil when you're done talking. You mean to tell me that she also bragged about sodomy? Okay. Strong black woman, huh? Successful. You got to stop being so simple. Y'all want to see it? You want to see it? Let it rip. Let the rings exchanged and the vows declared symbolize your commitment sincerity and affection yeah. and may your love never falter love. by virtue of the power and authority vested in me by the state of california i now declare you spouses for life oh no i feel it When people show you who you are, who they are, when people show you who they are, believe them. That's up. That's up. You understand? A hater, an enemy of your people. And down for the LGBTQ movement. And even bragged about how she was one of the first to officiate a same-sex marriage. And you know, you got so-called Christian folk boy was crying, lip fumbling the other night when she was so-called nominated. Lip fumbling, crying, finally a black woman in a place of high authority such as the VP. If they win against the orange pervert. <laughs> So at least he's shooting straight on that. You know how many pastors I've said with in my life that are scared to straight call it for what it is when it comes down to homosexuality. They are afraid. You understand? At least he's saying we need husbands and wives around her. You know what I mean? At least he ain't scared to say that. You know what I mean? So salute to him on that. You dig? I don't know his whole understanding or whatever, but at least he ain't afraid. To stand up and shoot straight. You understand? And that's what's needed in this hour. Men is going to stand boldly on the word no matter what the repercussion of blowback is. Period. You know what I mean? Straight up. 
Real families. That's right. We need mothers, men born, male, women born, female. We need real people. Wow! Somebody shout something to God. Can I get a witness? You know, you know he had to. You know he had to let off that that old preacher squeal at the end. All right, so that right there. So, so far, we understand that she's someone that hates your people. Uh, nine out of ten cases that she took incarcerated. It's a 90% incarceration rate, basically. 87% is basically 90%. All right. So if you if she had your case prosecuted, it, it was a wrap for you. He said we call her Miss Lockup a brother, and you already knew that you was dead in the water. All right, so so far. We understand she's an enemy of the Most High's people, and she was one of the first to oversee a so-called same-sex marriage in California to preside over it. If you understand it so far, go ahead and give us a seven up in the chat. Let's get further into it. We're going we to look at little Joe Biden, too. It's fun. He's an idiot. <laughs> oh, man. I thought Donald Trump was, you know, a little challenged upstairs. I thought Trump was a few sandwiches short of a picnic. Boy, but old Joe, old sleepy Joe Biden, man, look. <laughs> All right, so y'all understand so far. You know what I mean? No need for you lip fumbling and, and singing, we shall overcome. You did. All right, you know. I thought Donald Trump was a shoot a, a few rocks short of a collection. Sleepy Joe Biden, man, look, that man is beyond off. <laughs> uh, oh, <old> Babylon! <laughs> All right, next. All right, this what well, this video here is a little bit longer. Uh, this comes from uh, my art priest Daniela's channel. Maccabees TV. His wife, uh, Malka, did a. She's from Jamaica. She's from the very spot that Kamala Harris' father is from. It's a 30 minute vid. We're going to watch this. She did an excellent breakdown of her family tree. I'm going to click play on this. Listen up. Herbs and all that stuff, but not today. Hey guys, hey, hey everybody, how you guys doing? Okay, so I know you guys are used to me talking about health and herbs and all that stuff, hey, but hey, not everybody. today. <laughs> not today. Today, I'm about to ruffle your feathers. <laughs> I'm about to ruffle your feathers today, especially with your so-called Jamaicans, okay? Um, I'm about to ruffle the Jamaicans' feathers today because... No phone, you know. I'm not talking to you. I'm not You're all a bunch of smart, educated fools. That's what I like to call y'all. You know? And a lot of y'all Jamaicans, you know, a raccoon, you know, and I like to call y'all raccoons, okay? Y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? Because a lot of Jamaicans, they love everybody else but themselves, okay? If you look remotely, Black. People will love you. See? You, you, you got to look like everybody else. You got to look Chinese. You got to look Indian. You got to look like everybody else for, for, to be loved by Jamaican people. That's just what it is. I, I was listen. If y'all know me, you know that I was born and raised in Jamaica. Born and raised. Okay. I didn't come here when I was five, like a lot of people. I didn't come here when I was two or twelve or ten years old. I came here to this country in America as an adult, okay? So um, I went through school in Jamaica, from elementary all the way up to high school, to, to, to trade school, yeah. So I came to this country as an adult. So I think I'm qualified to speak on this topic today, okay? <laughs> but I'm telling y'all, all well, Jamaicans, I'm talking about y'all so-called Jamaicans. You love everybody but yourself. You gotta get off that. You gotta get off that, man. Seriously. We're gonna get into this video today where we're gonna talk about a trending topic right now where um, 
a certain woman was chosen to be the running mate for some clown who's running for president, right? And everybody's running around like chickens with their head chopped off, wondering is she black? What is her father? His father is black, blah, 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 yada, yada. Um, well, her father is Jamaican, so he must be black. For crying out loud, just because somebody was born in Jamaica doesn't make them black. Like, like if my mother and my father had migrated to say China, and my mom gave birth to me in China, would that make me Chinese? No. That would make me this little Negro guy just happened to be born in China. That's all it is. Okay? So everybody in Jamaica is not one of us. There are a lot of people in Jamaica that are from a different nation that happen to have migrated to Jamaica and build a life there. Okay? You have Chinese Jamaican, you have Indian Jamaican, you have white Jamaican that was born and raised in Jamaica. Yes, I went to school with these people. I went to school with Indian people in Jamaica from elementary all the way up to high school. Uh, I went to school with all these other people in Jamaica. And they're not one of us. They just had it happen that their family migrated there from a different nation different country somewhere and they came to Jamaica to look for a piece of the pie, right? And that's just what it is. Okay? So now before I get into this video, let me say this, right? Now I'm not gonna get too deep into this part. Okay? But um there was if if you are Jamaican, you should know this. If you are a so called Jamaican, you should know this because listen, my father my uncle and my uncle educate myself in America Jamaica and I'm not educate myself. You understand? When I'm going to read a book, see, I'm going to educate myself. See, I'm, listen, I like to educate myself on some of the history. Now, I'm not going to say I know it all, but I like to educate myself on some of the history of the place where I was born, at the very least. I like to know what's going on and what happened and what's, you know, what took place. I like to educate myself. And I am Jamaican people. Where island want to come from? Because I don't read book, right? I don't read my study, I don't know what I want up there. You understand? So I'm I'm here to tell y'all who Kamala Harris's father was and who his family was, okay? Um, so back in the days, there was a large migration of Irish people that migrated to Jamaica. And they migrated there just like just like a lot of uh, Caucasian folks, because that, that's what they are, Caucasian, right? Caucasians are like vultures, you know. At the slightest opportunity, whenever they see an opportunity, they just gobble it all up. They go and they grab, they're like, they're like hyenas. You guys know what the animal hyenas, right? A hyena, they just come swoop right in whenever there's a little opportunity and they just gobble everything up. That's what, that's what these people are. So, back in the days, during slavery, and even after slavery, there was a large migration of Irish people to the island of Jamaica, right? So, to this day, there are Irish people in Jamaica. Um, and I know this because some of them were married to my family. Sadly, okay, I hate to admit that, but I have family members who were married to Irish. Okay? By marriage. I mean, I'm not claiming any of these people. But that's just by marriage. Now I'm not related to any of these, these people. Okay? But they're there to this day. Okay. Um. So I just want to throw that out there because that's very important to the story. Okay. There's a large migration of not not just the Irish. I mean, there's English. There's everybody else out there. But I just want to throw it out there that there was a large migration of Irish people in Jamaica. All right. During and after and after slavery. Now, now, let's get to the core of this story. Now, I want you guys to take a little walk with me down memory lane here, all right? So, once upon a time, there was an Irishman by the name of Joseph Alexander Harris, right? Take a walk with me. Joseph Alexander Harris, y'all write that down. Joseph Alexander Harris. This is Camilla's great grandfather. 
That's right, y'all. Father, grandfather, great grandfather, three generations back. Y'all, this ain't even ancient history for her. Three generations back. All right. Joseph Harris. All right. Look, and he was Irish. All right. A straight up heathen. Me now, guys. Take a walk with me. Once upon a time, there was an Irishman by the name of Joseph Alexander Harris. Joseph Alexander Harris was married to an Irish woman by the name of Christiana Brown. Joseph Harris married Christiana Brown. Write that down. This is the great grandfather of Kamala Harris and the great grandmother of Kamala Harris. Both white Irish heathens. Both immigrants to Jamaica. Joseph Alexander Harris, Christina Brown. And we ain't talking y'all on back, you know what I mean, 1600s. We talking about three generations back for her. And notice the last name Harris, all right? So you know this is coming down her father's side. She still carries the same last name. This is coming right down her father's lane. Joseph Alexander Harris, Christina Brown. And you, what you really need to do, what you really need to do is highlight or underline Christina Brown. Because later on in the video, she's going to come back to her and who her family was. Oh, we. Okay. Now, we're not going to get into Christiana Brown right now. We're going to get into her and her family later. But I want you guys to keep her name in the back of your head. Okay? Just store it away there for a minute. All right? Okay. So, Joseph Alexander Harris. His father's name was uh, Constantine Harris. Okay? Joseph Alexander Harris. His father was an Irish heathen named Constantine Harris. From the old, from the good old land. All right? From Ireland. Constantine Harris, all right? Joseph Alexander Harris is the one, his son, who migrated to Jamaica, the Irish heathen, and married Christiana Brown, another Irish heathen. Everybody understand so far? I'm doing this because some of y'all saying y'all can't hear. There's nothing I can do about the sound. You know, try to listen the best way you can, and you know what I mean? But until then, I just do talking points. All right, watch this. Okay, we don't really know much about his mom, but uh, his father's name was Constantine Harris. Um, so Joseph Alexander Harris was married to Christiana Brown, and those two people had a little Irish boy, okay? They had a little Irish boy by the name of Oscar Harris. Oscar Harris, all right? So Joseph Alexander Harris married a, uh, I think Christina Brown, and they had a son named Oscar Harris. Write down that's Camilla, that's Kamala Harris' grandfather. That's her grandfather. We got Joseph Alexander Harris, her great grandfather. All right, then Oscar Harris, her grandfather. Irish heathen. Oh, we. Oh, we. I know your wheels turning by now. Oh, we. Okay. okay. Oscar Harris. That's only two generations for her. Removed. Oh, the little Irish boy, Oscar Harris, grew up. And he married some mixed mulatto slave master baby whatever the hell she was by the name of Beryl something or other Beryl. Oscar Harris a, a Irish heathen marries a mulatto girl they called the Beryl this is where the pigmentation starts coming into play at. he married a mulatto uh, a girl in Jamaica named uh, they called her Beryl All right? watch this 
Beryl Christie, I don't, I don't know, whatever. She, uh, she's not important. But the little Irish Oscar grew up, married some woman named Beryl. I believe that's what her name was. And they had a little Irish boy by the name of Donald J. Harris. Write down, write that name down. So far, we got Joseph Harris, Oscar Harris, and Donald Harris. Y'all believe it or not, Donald Harris is the spawn of an Irish heathen named Oscar Harris, who's the spawn of another Irish heathen named Joseph Harris, who immigrated and my or who migrated to Jamaica. Y'all, Donald J. Harris is the father of Kamala Harris. The father. All right? Now, he's a byproduct of his Irish heathen father and his mulatto mother named Burr. All right? So when you see a picture of him, he looks like he got a little pigmentation. You know what I mean? But make no mistake about this. These are all spawns of Irish heathens. Y'all, and look, again, this ain't ancient history. It ain't like it's on back during, you know, back during the 1600s, like, you know, man, Thomas Jefferson and all them. Y'all, this is, this is recent news. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Donald J. Harris. The little Irish boy grew up and married some Indian lady by the name of Shamala something or other. I don't know what her name is. She's not important. <laughs> okay. Um, they had two daughters by the name of one Maya Harris and the other one name is Kamala Harris. Okay. No doubt. No doubt. So Donald Harris marries an East Indian woman. Not a Native American Indian, an East Indian woman, which makes sense because if you check any news, that's who Kamala Harris identified with. She identified with her mother's East Indian side. Y'all, this woman ain't even, this woman ain't Israel at all. At all. Man, that's wild, man. <laughs> Yeah, the ones, the Hindu worshippers, the ones with the red dots on their forehead. This woman ain't even Israel, and people lip fumbling, back stiff, booties tight, crying. Y'all, we finally, we ain't gonna get no black woman prep. We mess around and get a black woman vice president. She's a strong black woman and a powerful VP nomination. Really, really. How long will you simple ones love simplicity? How long? No, Obama wasn't one of us at all. Well, they love to give you leaders, don't they? They love to give you leaders. Y'all, so three generations back, we got Joseph Harris. We got Oscar Harris. We got Donald Harris. Then we got Kamala Harris. Fathers on back are all Irish heathens as far as you can go back and trace lineage. Irish heathens. It'd be different if she descended from some of the black folk that had to get up out of Ireland due to Oliver Cromwell and his wickedness going on. No, that ain't what it is. Because some people say, well, I didn't know it wasn't none of that. Keep listening. You're going to see. You're going to see. You're going to see. So, so far, we didn't find out this woman ain't even an Israelite at all. Two, she done made a career. Every nine out of ten cases, she tried in Oakland or San Francisco. You understand? They get incarcerated. And also, she's down with LGBTQ. What profit is it for you that she's in the White House? Or that she's vice president. What, what does it profit the 12 tribes of Israel that Kamala Harris could possibly be the vice president of the United Snakes of America? I'll wait. I'll wait. So far, I ain't heard nothing. Her resume shows that she's an enemy of us. Her fathers are straight Irish heathens. 
Oh, and wait till we get to her great grandmother and, and them. Oh man, y'all gonna be like, oh man. Chloe, look, look, we look video over. I, Mally, you are we already know what the video about. I guess over. I get it now. Trip off that. For one, she ain't even no Israelite. So we know that's violation for you to even be out there voting for her. Two, she bragged about being one of the first to perform a same-sex marriage ceremony in the good old state of California. And three, she done made a career, a 90% incarceration rate where over 90% of them was you. Oh, wait. I sniff a corrupt politic, a politician, should I say. I sniff a corrupt politician. I sniff a terror amongst us. I sniff a straight enemy. Or everybody around her seal clapping. Y'all, I just be disgusted sometimes, man. I just be disgusted. You know what I mean? Oh, I be in the house sometimes. Like, I don't even want to go out around. Sometimes you don't even want to be out and be around all this, man. You Like, I, I can't believe how simple our people are. And y'all, the information that uh, Malchus is talking about right here, y'all, y'all from Wikipedia, Kamala Harris. Y'all from Wikipedia her and look her and look her family up. Now, when you get to getting on back past a father, you you know, they the pictures, they don't even get to show on no pictures or nothing like that. You know what I mean? But what, what Malcolm did was go to Jamaica and pull records. Went to a certain parish in Jamaica, huh? And pulled some records. And on top of that, our mama's an Elam. E-L-A-M, Elam, East Indian. You know the people that have babies born with eight arms and 20 legs that worship Shiva and all the man? Come on, man. I think y'all all know better. I think we all know better. Joseph Alexander Harris, Oscar Harris. Joseph Alexander Harris, great grandfather. Oscar Harris, grandfather. Donald J. Harris, father. And then you got Kamala Harris. The current Democratic nominee for vice president. If you just run back her fathers, they're all heathens. Her mama is a heathen. And her grandmama that her uh her grandmama, her grandmama that her uh grandfather married was a, a mulatto mixed with a whole bunch of different. So there, there may be a, a, a slight strain of Negro in there, but for the most part, this woman is a straight up heathen. Heathen. <laughs> wow. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little walk with me there for a second. Ah, okay, so you want me to run it down again? Let me run it down again. So you had Joseph Alexander Harris, um, the Irishman who migrated from Ireland to Jamaica. His daddy name was Constantine Harris. Now, whether or not the daddy was born in Jamaica, I'm not sure. I don't think he was. Um, but um, I don't think he migrated there either. He may have. I'm not sure either. But his daddy name was Constantine Harris. So you have Joseph Alexander Harris, right? Who married Christiana Brown, which we're going to get to in a minute. Okay? So hold on to your hats. <laughs> So those two had a son by the name of Oscar, a little Irish boy. That little Irish boy grew up, married some whatever, uh, Beryl, I believe her name was, and they had a little Irish son by the name of Donald J. Harris. Donald J. Harris married some Indian woman, and they had two daughters. One of them is Maya Harris, and the other one is Kamala Harris. So there you go. You see how easy that was? Now, this information is public knowledge. You can go right there in Jamaica and get um, this information in the public uh, uh, record of this. But now, let me share my screen with you guys for a second. Okay? Let me share my screen with you for a second. Now, I mean, you guys know who that is, right? You've seen him before. That is. Donald J. Harris, that's Kamala Harris's daddy. 
right? Look at him. Take a look at him. That's Kamala Harris's daddy, right? Okay. Let's go back to my screen here. All right. So you guys may have seen this woman here. That is Kamala Harris's great grandmother. Okay. Her name is Iris Finnegan. Iris Finnegan. Mrs. Finnegan. Miss Iris, as we, you know, we call her Miss Iris, right? Miss Iris um, was a mixed woman in Jamaica. She, her family, I believe, was a mixture of Irish and, uh, I'm sorry, Irish and um, Indian or something or other. But she was not a fully black woman. She was some mixture of something, okay? So that's Kamala Harris, uh, grand, great grandmother. And this here, this little child is Kamala Harris, okay? So this is a picture of Kamala as a baby and her great grandmother, okay? And this picture was taken in Jamaica, all right? So that is Iris Finnegan and little baby Kamala Harris there, okay? That's Kamala Harris's father's grandmother, all right? So let's go back to my page here. Uh, I'm sorry, let's go back to my, uh, my screen. Okay, so um, now I hear a lot of you guys saying, well, her daddy will look black, and he's Jamaican, so he's one of us. She's one of us. Lord have mercy. Let me say this to you guys, right? First of all, um, Kamala Harris's father's grandmother, his mom and grandmother, um, they were mixed, okay? They, they're, they were mixed. Um, his mom was mixed, his grandmother was mixed. I don't know, mixture of some mix of bloodline there okay so if you know the man had um a little bit of negro blood in him okay um because it's his mom y'all know the negro blood is stronger than everybody else's okay the dna stronger right so um mommy and grandmother was mixed so that's why you have that um black feature in kamala harris's father and if you live on a caribbean island all your life you're gonna have some type of pigmentation in your skin because it's always 90 something degrees in Jamaica and all the other islands. It's always hot in, in, in the Caribbean. I grew up there. Okay, so when I when I go back home to Jamaica, as dark as I am, when I go home, I spend two weeks in Jamaica, I come back, I'm glistening. I'm 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 so <laughs> I'm so dark, I'm glistening, okay? It's two weeks and I'm I'm shining. That's just what it is. When you live on an island and you're in the sun, you're going to the beach, you're, you're just going about your daily life, you're, you're going to get darker. And if you were born and raised there, that's even, obviously, you're going to be dark. So if you're wondering why the man is have a dark, darker skin, obviously he was raised, he was born and raised on an island, for God's sake. You have white people and Chinese people in Jamaica who is almost as dark as I am. How do I know that? Because I grew up with these people, okay? They're on an island, for God's sake. So anyway, so if you're wondering why the man is so dark, I mean, is, is dark, you know, a darker complexion compared to white folks, um, he lives on an island all his life, okay? And his mom's side of the family is have some Negro blood in it. So um, there you have it, okay? So um, now, now, let's go back to the beginning for a second. Let's take a stroll back to the beginning. So you have Joseph Alexander Harris, right? Who was married to Christiana Brown, right? Christiana Brown was an Irish girl from Ireland. Her father name was Hamilton Brown. Hamilton now we going back. Remember Joseph Alexander Harris? He married a woman named Christiana Brown. Well, Christiana Brown has a father named Hamilton Brown. If anybody from Jamaica listening right now, that name should sound real familiar. Watch this. What's Christiana Brown's um, father's name? Okay. So um, why is this important? Well, I'm about to take you on a little ride through the rabbit hole. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna share my screen with you guys again. 
Hey, she, I, I like the way she laughs. She's just cracking up. <laughs> you know what I mean? She knows she's right. She just cracking up and just laughing like, man. I can show you guys exactly what it is that I'm talking about here. I'll show you guys this. This here is a map of Jamaica, right? Now, why is this important? Why is this important? Well, um, Jamaica has 14 parishes, right? 14 parishes. Just like America has 50 states, Jamaica has 14 parishes. We don't call it states in Jamaica. We call it parishes. And Jamaica has 14 of them, okay? So right here, I'm going to zoom in. Right here is the parish of St. Anne, okay? If you look right here to the left of my screen, you're going to see that it says St. Anne Parish, Jamaica, right? So this here is the entire, entire parish of St. Anne, all right? This here. This is just one of the many, one of the 14 parishes of Jamaica. Now, I'm going to zoom in right here. I'm going to click on it. And if you go to the left of the screen here, it's going to say Brownstown. Brownstown. Hold on. So Joseph Harris, Joseph Alexander Harris married Christiana Brown, who's a daughter of Hamilton Brown. You mean to tell me they family was so powerful they got a town named after them? Brownstown, huh? Hmm. Keep listening. Jamaica, right? Now, why is this important? Why is this important? Sister Monica, why are you showing us Jamaica and Brownstown and St. Anne's? Okay, so that's the parish of St. Anne, and that is the little town here called Brownstown, right? Right here, where you see that circle. You see that circle? There you go. Right here. That's Brownstown, right? Okay. Why is any of this important? Well, Let's go back to my screen so I can explain to you guys why that's important. So, we just saw the map of Jamaica, and I just show you the parish of St. Anne. And in that parish, there is a town called Brown's Town. Okay. Why is that important? Well, Kamala Harris's father, his great grandmother, Whose name was Christiana Brown? Remember her? Told you guys to keep that in the back of your head there for a minute, right? Okay. Christiana Brown was married to Joseph Alexander Harris, right? Christiana Brown is the great great grandmother of Kamala Harris, okay? Her family was a wealthy family in Jamaica, and they came from Ireland, okay? Her family wealthy they own sugarcane plantation in jamaica oh plantations oh, 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 oh so you mean to tell me that this woman great grandmother christiana brown who was married to her great grandfather joseph alexander harris is a daughter of hamilton brown who owns sugarcane plantations. Y'all, do y'all know what this means? This heifer ain't no victim of slavery. She's a beneficiary. She's a beneficiary of slavery. She ain't no victim. Her people wasn't on slave ships, none of that. Her great grandmother is daughter to Hamilton Brown, who owned the biggest sugar sugar cane plantations in Jamaica. Wealthy family off the backs of the real Hebrews who built up Jamaica. Y'all, this woman ain't no, she ain't even no Israelite. She's an enemy who has profited, whose family has profited. Off the blood, sweat, and tears of your people. She's not a victim of slavery. She's not. I mean, that's obvious. Look at her incarceration rate. 
Look at how she made her career, locking up 90% of you. Every, every nine out of 10 cases she take, she's victorious. She's down for the LGBT. She's a heathen. Not only that, her great grandmother and them is slave money. She's a beneficiary of slavery, not a victim. Wow. 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 And they owned a few hundred slaves. They owned a few hundred slaves in the largest sugar cane plantation in Jamaica. To this day, there's a town named Brownstown. That's right, PP. That's why she's anti-reparation, because she'd be paying them. <laughs> Good point, Aki. Excellent point. That's why Kamala Harris is anti-reparation. You know why? Because she would have to pay up. Her family is slave money. Y'all no different than the families that own these football teams and basketball teams and baseball teams. That's slave money. That's slave money. And you got the nerve to fumble your lips and almost cry because you thought a black woman was about to be vice president or been nominated to be vice president for the Democratic Party. How long will you simple ones love simplicity? Straight up. That, look, her whole family. I mean, this, I mean, her mama is East Indian. You know that ain't us. So you, she got a grandmama. That's mixed with a little Negro, but the rest East Indian and Irish, and that, that's a mix up. Y'all, everybody else a he well, they all heathens. These Indian heathens, too. I'm talking about everybody else, Irish heathens. This is wild, man. So y'all check this on out. You know what I mean? Again, her whole lineage. Her whole lineage. You understand? Her, her great-grandfather, Joseph Alexander Harris, marries Christiana Brown, who's the daughter of Hamilton Brown, the largest sugar cane plantation owner in Jamaica, owned a few hundred slaves. They have Oscar Brown. Oscar Brown gets, gets, with, uh, gets with his uh, mixed woman, you know what I mean? Mixed with Irish and, and a little bit of Negro and East Indian. And they have Donald J. Harris. Donald J. Harris marries an East Indian woman and has Kamala Harris. Y'all, she ain't even no Israelite. She ain't none of us at all. She's a straight heathen. So let's run it back. Her, her, her views on same-sex marriage. Hell, she bragged about being one of the first to marry to openly marry a same-sex couple in the state of California. We've seen the video. Her record for incarcerating locking up brothers is 90% higher than the Fed, higher than the federal government. Not only that, her father, if you just run back her father's side, purely white Irish heathens. Her mama is an East Indian Elam. That ain't us. And to put the icing on the cake, y'all. Her great grandmother is the daughter, or was the daughter of Hamilton Brown. Brownstown in Jamaica is named after him, who was the largest sugarcane plantation owner in Jamaica and owned a few hundred slaves. Y'all, this woman is a descendant of slave money. If y'all understand so far, go ahead and give us a Yahoo up in the chat. Uh, Judah Love is clickbait. We're not telling nobody to vote. We're simply exposing the history of or the lineage of Kamala Harris. Sit on back and take notes. That's wild, man. And these Negroes out here, you know what I mean? Like straight going crazy. Like this woman is a straight, a strong black woman. Y'all, if y'all ain't figured out by now, the, the title was clickbait. 
I know people are gonna be clicking on her like Miley tripping. The hell he going through it. His brother done fell off. He what he finna do? Tell us to vote. <laughs> it's clickbait, y'all. You know what I mean? Nothing more, nothing less. That that's just to get the naysayers up in her. And then when they be like, dang, hold on. You dig? And again, even if you was in the world, right? And you wanted to vote for a candidate. Shouldn't your candidate, shouldn't your candidate's morals and ideals reflect yours? All right, so what about her morals and her ideals reflect anything that got to do with the so-called quote-unquote Israel community? What? It makes no sense. It did. So when y'all get a chance, you know what I mean? Y'all can finish that on up. That's on Maccabees TV. You know what I mean? Excellent video. All right. From there, we're going to look at old cussing Joe Biden real quick. <laughs> Boy, these heathens love making a, a, a mockery of themselves. I try to tell you. But, you know, don't, don't fall for the snake oil, Israel. Don't fall for the snake oil. This is some of his awkward moments. And he's kind of, you know, that man is kind of slow. But uh, matter of fact, I'm about to jump into some scriptures so we can see what's going on. And uh, what we've been looking at so far is what? That none of this is for us. As you're bumping the Israelites to still be, you know, believing it's all good, man. I'm about to go out and vote. Like, boy, for what? What is wrong with you? You know what I mean? And look, I know you don't think. Well, okay, finally we can vote because it's an Israelite about to be vice president if they win. Nah, Jack, she ain't no Israelite at all. You know what I mean? I love to be the bird of bad news. Because that's the topic, Judah Love. Take notes or, you know, you got the right to keep it moving. You know what I mean? You don't like what's being said. That's the beautiful thing about social media. Your thumbs work well, I suppose. Yeah, keep it moving. Deuteronomy 17 is where we going next. Deuteronomy 17. And also because our people need to know what's going on. You know what I mean? A lot of our people are deceived to this very moment. They, they, they dropped a few tears when she was nominated as so-called the VP nomination for the Democratic Party. You know what I mean? So whenever there's time to edify the most highest people, we bring it on up. If that's the case, we might as well talk about we might as well not talk about nothing. Meanwhile, the Messiah say, watch as well as pray. You gotta be watchful. You gotta know what's going on. To warn your people, don't fall for the snake hole. You know what I mean? Oh man, he groping on babies. Oh cussing Joe. <laughs> All right, Deuteronomy 17 and 15. Y'all write this down. All right, this is the scripture a lot of us understand, a lot of us go to. You know what I mean? Uh, and it goes into setting someone over you, right? Deuteronomy 17 and 15. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the most high your power shall choose. One from among your brethren. One from among your brethren shall thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not, thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not your brother. Ooh wee. Y'all see this? Ooh wee. And that's for all the brothers jumping out there going to vote. For one, ain't none of them us. Even Barack Hussein Obama wasn't us. Two, it says, who the most high should choose. So what's someone whose morals and ideals should be aligning with what? The mind of the Most High. The law and the prophets. The gospels. You understand? And the only opportunity you got to do any of that would be a local. If you know you want to take, do an Israelite takeover and take over some cities. You can do that and put brothers in alderman spots and mayor spots. And, you know what I mean? If you want to organize on that type of level. So local politics is your best shot at even doing something like that if you want to waste your time doing it. You know what I mean? But that's local. 
You know what I mean? They would have said the roof, the roof is on fire. <laughs> you did. Most I straight told you. Yeah, you both set a person over you for one who he should choose. So definitely one whose morals and ideals align with the most high. Same sex marriage does not align with the most high. Right? Making a career off the victimization and exploitation of the most high's people. You feel me? With a 90% incarceration rate is not nothing that aligns with the ideals and the morals of the most high. And y'all, not only that, she ain't an Israelite, so she ain't from amongst our brethren. And she is definitely a stranger. That says you may not set a stranger with thee, which is not your brother. That's clear cut right there. That's clear cut. That's clear cut. You don't even need no explanation behind it. You know what I mean? Easy work. I know, I know, I know. I know. Let's give an example of that, though. That's the beautiful thing about the scripture. It either is or it ain't, right? I'll show you something. Don't go to Deuteronomy 18 and 15. I'll show you something. Show you how the Bible works. But, you know, Mally, give us an example. Okay. Give you an example real quick. All right. One of my favorite scriptures. Deuteronomy 18 and 15. All right, this ain't even gonna be too long tonight, y'all. Just want to come on and you know <laughs> ruffle a few feathers, you know, give a little bit of information out there just in case some of our people didn't know and they were deceived. All right, and on top of that, y'all, you already know I can't get on the ballot, so what are we voting for anyway? Messiah ain't on the ballot, but I look like vote voting for what? Big for a burning house, huh? Deuteronomy 18, 15. The most high thy power will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren. Right? Not just our king, but even our prophets had to be out of the midst of Israel, out of the midst of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were no Hindu prophets and no white boy prophets and no Chinese prophets and none of that. The prophets all came out of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's how we can boldly tell you that Muhammad is not no prophet. He's not an Israelite. All right. From the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him you shall hearken. According to all that thou desirest of the Most High, thy power and horror. And the day of the assembly saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Most High, my power. Neither let me see this great fire anymore, that I die not. Hmm. The Most High said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, to thee is Moses, like unto Moses. I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken to my words, she shall speak in my name. I will require it of him. So Moses is prophesying about a future prophet that will be raised amongst the Israelites in the midst of Israel. He will be like unto Moses. And if you don't listen to him, that'll be your life. That'll be your life. Understand? So that's detrimental. Notice it said, from the midst of thy brethren. Y'all, we are not to be putting heathens over us. Heathens are not to be over us, period. You know what I mean? Hey, whether they claim they are a believer or not, a right? Gentile heathen is not to be over Israel, period. Y'all get that understanding so far? Go ahead and give us a Yahoo up in the chat. All right, let's get a little further understanding because it said like unto Moses, right? Show you what you mean, what it means like unto Moses. So we ain't got to be trying to wing nothing. We're not wing masters over here. Take our time and go through the script and make sure we all get understanding. All right. All right. This is Deuteronomy 34 and 10. 
like under Moses. And that prophet had to come out of the midst of the brethren, our kings, our prophets, our priests, all that had to come out of the midst of the nation. There were not heathens ruling over us. You dig? In the time of the Messiah, there was an illegitimate king sitting on the throne, Herod. You got to go into the history. Herod was an Edomite. That was off. You dig? We see how that ended for him. Not only that, uh, well, I'll, I'll post that article when I do the class again. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna spill the beans right now. You know what I mean? All right, Deuteronomy thirty-four and ten. What does it mean, like under Moses? All right, well, here we go, right here. Deuteronomy thirty-four and ten. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel, like under Moses, whom knew the Most High, whom the Most High knew face to face. This is, this is how this prophet would be like unto Moses. And all the signs and wonders, and all the signs and wonders which the Mosai sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land, and in all that mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. So this this prophet that will be coming out of the midst of Israel, our brethren will be like under Moses in signs and wonders. Don't want to leave you hanging, so let's go. Let's go track this man, this mighty man of the Most High. Down. Easy work. Let's go to the Book of Acts. We'll read Acts a few verses in Acts the second chapter and Acts the third chapter. All right. This is how this works. Most High did not choose these heathens for us to be running out here to vote for them. We in our land of our captivity, we're going to be using this time to get ourselves together, repenting, humbling ourselves before the Most High, loving one another, feel me, and getting prepared to watch this sucker go up and smoke because it will shortly. All right. You going to vote, and I look, I know the eyes are deceiving. You thought that woman was a straight sister. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. All right, wait till y'all see her husband. Oh. oh, man, I forgot to show y'all her husband. Yeah, she married to a, a straight pale heathen. <laughs> man, you can't make this stuff up, man. I try to tell you, boy. I try to tell you. These people are not for you. You know what I mean? These people are not for us. Period. End of story. All right. Uh, Acts chapter 2. All right. Acts the second chapter. Ooh, we. We're going to read 21 and 22. And then we're going to jump over to chapter 3 and we're going to start at verse 19. The bag of this right here bags up Deuteronomy 34. Said Moses was doing signs and wonders. He said that prophet would be like unto him. Like unto him in signs and wonders. This is Acts 2, 21 and 22. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the master shall be saved. Ye men of Israel. Oof. Hear these words. Of Mashayat, Yahushua, Yahweh of Nazareth, a man approved of Yah among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which the most I did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. So you bag up Deuteronomy 34, 10 and 11 with Acts 2, 21 and 22. This is how Messiah in the New Testament is and was the prophet Moses was prophesying about that what Moses High was seeing like unto him, like unto Moses How? But well, he wasn't from the tribe of Levi. He wasn't, uh, okay. he wasn't born in Egypt. Yeah, okay, yawn. In signs, miracles, and wonders that he did in your sight. That's how. All right. Now, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and do. Acts the third chapter to back up Deuteronomy 18. Because remember, the prophet must be 
will, must be from the midst of your brethren. And if you don't listen to them, the Most High is going to require that of you, meaning it's going to cost you your life. And the wild part about it is our people wanted that. Our people wanted a mediator. I heard that voice of the Most High, that thunder, that lightning, the mountain quaking, the mountain on fire, trumpets blazing. And the Most High shout down commandments. They, our people thought we were good as dead. And we told Moses, look, Moses, you go talk to him. Whatever he tell you, bring to us and we'll listen to you. Well, we require the media. You know what I mean? You know, Moses was prophesying about the Messiah. So you see how this thing works? Who the most high shall choose? The most high definitely ain't choose, you feel me, you no know, Irish immigrants to Jamaica who own sugarcane plantations and own hundreds of your forefathers. The most I definitely ain't set this whole thing up for you to be voting for a woman that openly brags about being one of the first ones to officiate a same-sex marriage in California. The most I definitely ain't set this situation up for you to be voting for this woman and her and she done locked up more of you than slavery. She got a higher incarceration rate than the federal government, Kamala Harris. So for one, she, for one, her morals and ideals don't line up with you. So you know the most high ain't Joseph. Her morals and ideas don't line up with the most high, nor his people. So you know she ain't been chose by the most high for you to be setting it her up above you. Two, she's down with sodomy, lesbianism, man on man. She's marrying men. She's marrying women. The very crime that got Sodom and Gomorrah nuked by the Mosai. Three, she's a heathen on both sides of her family. Four, she's a beneficiary of slavery, not a victim. This woman, there is no benefit, no profit for you to be voting for a Kamala Harris. <laughs> Straight up, man. I'm going to show you how this works. Who the most high should choose, right? And, and if the Messiah, the Christ, ain't on the ballot, what you're voting for? Newsflash, you won't be voting for him. He coming to take what's his. And in his kingdom, going to be a dictatorship, not a demonocracy dictatorship yeah law and order you feel me and his faithful elect gonna be dictating policy in this earth we gonna rule you heathens with a rod of iron i mean we gonna run a tight ship boy oh we oh we man i pray i'm fine worthy i can't wait because i don't belong in this this is something else i don't understand this I've been in the house lately. I don't even want to be out. It's sickening. It's sickening. You dig? But yeah, I'm all in on that world to come right there. That make all the sense in the world to me. All the sense in the world. Dictate policy around here. You feel me? And you heathens going to be broken to shivers. Pieces. There will be no voting. There will be no negotiations. There will be no... You know, let, let's hold a secret UN council. Ain't none of that. Get down or lay down. How else? Look, you got to meet power with power, force with force. It makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. You know what I mean? Make all the sense in the world to me. All right, so this right here bags up Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19. This is Acts 3, so the verse 19. It says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the master. And he shall send Yahushua, Yahushua Mashiach, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive into the times of restitution of all things, which the Most High has spoken by the mouth of all his holy, his holy prophets since the world began. That's a shout at you, Negroes. Some of the Old Testament ain't solid no more. 
the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. But Moses truly said unto the fathers, the prophets shall the most high your power raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed among the people look at that that prophecy Moses was talking about was a prophecy about the Christ the Yahushua Hamashiach the only begotten son of the heavenly father oh we so that's how the picking and choosing of the most high you feel me his picking and choosing is always coming out of the midst of the brethren the nation of Israel that's how we can boldly tell you today there's no such thing as no Caucasian prophets. They're not. Jimmy Swaggett and Kenneth Copeland are not prophets. You understand? Billy Graham and them were not prophets. There's no such thing as no Arab prophet. Muham Sandwich was not a prophet. If you don't descend from the 12 tribes of Israel, you're not a prophet. Period. Did I say something wrong? <laughs> Did I say something wrong, girl? If I'm easy to understand, go ahead and throw a seven up in the chat. I may have ruffled a few feathers right there, you know what I mean? So we read so far that you're not supposed to set no one over you that is a stranger. You want to set a king over you, he had to be from the midst of your brethren, but he had to be someone that the most high chooses. What do you mean the Most High chooses? Well, his morals and his ideals got to be aligned with the Most High's word. Indeed. And if his politics ain't aligned with the Most High's word, even if he is one of us, and he can't rule over us. He can't, he can't be a king. He can't be a prophet. He can't be a priest. So then we give an example. Well, Moses said, all right, well, the Most High is going to raise up a prophet from the midst of your brethren like unto me, like unto him how? Signs, miracles, and wonders. And the Acts 2 and show 21 to 22 that was Messiah. Signs, miracles, and wonders. Acts 3, 19 on down, the show that had to do with Messiah. That's how this thing goes down. All right. What you're trying to vote for is a divided house. Let's go to Luke 11. Now, this ain't hard. We got a few scriptures. We ain't going to be long today. Just wanted to go ahead and you know. And again, y'all, if y'all just knew. Or just clicking on her, I ain't lost my mind. The title is clickbait for the naysayers. <laughs> the title is clickbait for the naysayers. All right, we find out today that Kamala Harris is a heathen from both sides of her family. That her morals and ideas don't align with the word of the Most High, and she is a beneficiary of slavery. And she done locked up more of us than slavery. And you about to go vote for her. And before I get off her, some make sure one of y'all remind me to show so we can show y'all her hubs, her husband, her good old hubby. <laughs> uh, uh, man, never a dull moment. Luke 11 and 17. All right. You voting for a divided kingdom. But he knowing their thoughts, it's the Messiah speaking. But he knowing their thoughts said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house falleth. You feel me? What wisdom you get out of that? Right? This is a kingdom. Is it divided against itself? If you would say, no, it's not divided against itself, you would be saying that the United States of America is a united kingdom. It's united. Is it united or divided? And if it's divided according to the word of the Most High, his only begotten beloved son, well, guess what's going to happen to this kingdom? It will be brought to desolation. And the will fall. All right? There's no reason for you. To be getting all amped and getting on your good foot and jumping out here going to vote. You know what I mean? The only way you can somewhat control 
any of this is local. You know what I mean? Because if you if you organize thoroughly enough, you could put a conscious Israelite brother in office. You know what I mean? He could be a mayor. He could be, be an alderman. You know what I mean? Comptrollers. If you organize enough. If you got time, you know what I mean, to do, you know what I mean, all that. A lot of us don't even got time to be tripping off all that. But if you wanted to, you did. I mean, that way you can be putting people in key positions, you know what I'm saying, within your city gates. You know what I mean? Not to discourage anybody, I'm just saying. Like, you can't do that nationally, though. Nationally, that ain't cracking. They'd have been did it if that was the case. All right, let's go to Jeremiah next. We're going to go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17. There's a few quick hitters. I just want to show y'all a few things. Again, y'all, y'all just clicking on this title. It's clickbait. Kamala Harris, a strong black woman. Dang, she ain't even you, huh? <laughs> y'all know politics mean many blood suckers, right? Poly is many ticks of blood suckers. Politics, many blood suckers. Jeremiah 17 and 5. All right. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 5. Thus saith the Most High, Yah, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm. And whose heart departed from the most high. Mm, 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 mm. That's powerful there, boy. I would say curse. You're running around putting all your eggs in Babylon. All your eggs in the basket. Huh? Thinking, well, at least, finally, somebody going to do something for us. Look, y'all. Barack Obama, he smoked cigarettes and joints. And he still didn't do nothing for you. He did more for the gay community than he did for you. And he smoked cigarettes, he smoked Newports and weed and played basketball. <laughs> and Barack Hussein Obama didn't do nam thing for us. So the most I says, curse be the man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the most high. That's right. What are you doing trusting in man for? For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the porch places in the wilderness in a salt land not inhabited. Ooh, we look at your inhabitation. Look at your heritage. That's straight said. If you trusting in man, you're going to be like the heath in the desert. You ain't going to see when good comes. Your dwelling place is going to be the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. Trip off that. It don't benefit you none to be out here just seal clapping and just so happy. And well, I remember Barack Obama got elected. Boy, I had family members crying. Come on, we, we did it. We did it. I'm like, we did what? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. How long, you simple ones? Well, you love simplicity. That's right, Mina Miller. I like that. You said you, you read a meme today that said Israelites don't vote for another pharaoh. We pray for an exodus. That's right. Y'all should be tired of all this. Blessed is the man that trusts the video way in whose hope the most high is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the water. And the spread of all her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall be and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Look at that. That means you're gonna be what? You're gonna be constantly productive. You're gonna be constantly burning fruit. All right, you a tree planted by rivers. That means your roots are constantly nourished, fruit is constantly being produced. You ain't worried about heat when it comes. You're protected. You're provided for because you trust in the most high, not man. Verse 9. You Negroes out here, but my heart's telling me to vote for Kamala and La Cuss and Joe. Little sleepy Joe Biden. 
The heart is deceitful above all things. Ooh, the heart, huh? The heart is deceitful above all things <laughs> and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You understand? The heart is your mind. If your mind is not established by the word of the most high, it will deceive you. That's the problem with this generation. Everybody's impulsive, what they feel. Everybody's self-centered and self-absorbed. What you want to do, what you feel. Nothing is based off the word of the Heavenly Father as if it's outdated. As if you figured something out. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High. It's foolishness. That which is highly esteemed is an abomination in the eyes of the Most High. Straight up, man. Straight up. Yeah, yeah, Dao. Whoa, uh, little sleepy Joe Biden said back in May that we ain't black and we ain't vote for him. You ain't black, you don't vote for me. I'm like, look at this heat. Look at this heat. Dude, I'll be surprised if the orange pervert ain't, ain't in that office another four years. I just, you know what I'm saying? I knew he was, you know, like I said, a few rocks short of a collection dealing with Donald Trump. You know what I mean? But, that boy, Joe Biden, oh, man, he made Trump look like a genius. That's bad. <laughs> I mean, that's bad, you know what I mean? But, man, they going to bring in, look, look, Joe Biden, no Kamala Harris, man, they look, they going to bring in that LGBTQ, more of that. They, they, they about taking guns. They about more abortions. I mean, at least Donald Trump is like, hell, hell. I mean, he, he going to shoot straight. You're dumb. You're fake news. I, I like that. Shoot straight. You know, we got a few hang-ups, of course. I mean, he's a heathen, of course. You know, you're dumb. You're fake news. And he about his money. You understand? He don't want to pay no taxes. I feel him. If I made all this money, why the hell I got to pay 40% of the money I made? That's almost like half. I feel him on that. Like, why I got to give up half of my stash? But somebody else would hustle wasn't as hard as mine. So, I mean, he about his business. He about his money. He don't want to pay no taxes. He ain't down with the gay community at all. He ain't down with uh, abortions at all. And he about gun rights. I mean, hey. I mean, I, I'll take that any day over uh, uh, Joe Biden and the Kamala Harris. I mean, I ain't voting for none of them anyway. I'm just saying. I'm about my guns. I'm about my business. You understand? I'm anti-abortion. I'm pro-gun. I'm anti. I'm against the homosexual, gay, LBGTQ movement. I'm against all that. You dig? Well, even though the heathen may be, you know, a few rocks short of a collection. Wait till you get a load of old cussing Joe. He is a supreme idiot. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, a supreme idiot. You know what I mean? So, I mean, hey, it's just what it is. Be mad at me all you want. I mean, they all heathens regardless. It ain't like I'm going out there to vote. But if I if, if, if I had to tell y'all well, whose ideals are lying closer to yours, it ain't. It ain't cussing Joe and Kamala, I'll tell you that. Dig? Trump may be a little slow, but compared to cussing Joe, he looks like a genius. He bought his guns. He bought his business. You dig? Trump got all his money out of it. All type of loans floating out I'm like, dang. You dig? He against the homosexual community. I am too. He's pro guns. I am too. He's against abortions. I am too. I mean, hey, you know, I ain't mad at you. I mean, you you still the orange pervert. You had your uh, you had your uh, Stormy Daniels situation going on with the porn store, but it wasn't a homosexual scandal. I mean, I, I'm not telling nobody you're not doing, you know, trying to. You know, buy prostitutes, 
Y'all forbid, please don't be on that. You did. Please don't be on that. What I'm saying is, if you look at him and you look at old sleepy cousin Joe and Kamala and him, man, please. Man, please. This deal mess around go up and smoke the day Joe Biden get elected. They know he's soft. That man is soft. Period. Man, they're going to be throwing nukes all over this deal that he get elected. Oh, man. Groping on children. That's just what it is, man. Right. Trump's a separatist. I am too. I don't want to be around no heathens at all. That's just what it is, man. You know, it's just what it is. That's right. That's right. We, we Israelites. We're not black. That's right. That's right, Aubrey. Yeah, he is going after them pedophile, those pedos and them blood drinkers. Going right after. That's right. He ain't a feminist. I, you, hey, you just, it's just what it is, man. Just what it is. All right. Verse ten, Jeremiah seventeen ten. I the Most High search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit. Of his doings. And just what it is, y'all. So curse be the man that trusteth in man. All right, from here, I want to go into the Apocrypha real quick. A few scriptures in the Apocrypha, and we're going to pray on out. Just want to, you know, inform the nation real quick. No, don't fall for the okie doke. Do not fall for the okie doke. You know what I mean? Let me see. The Apocrypha right on here, my children. I'm going off the little bit of pocket bed, son. Hold on, y'all. So y'all get to your pocket real quick. I got it. All right, let me see. Let me see. Ah, oh, no, that ain't, that ain't the one I'm looking for. Hold on, let me go back. I seen it. Seen it. Let's go to the Apocalypse. We're going to go to uh, Sirach chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 18. Dang, man, what's this deal doing? This is what I'm looking for. No, nah, that ain't the right one. That ain't the right one, Jack. They got it, but that ain't the one I usually go to. It's this one. All right, now let's go to Pop from North Rock 3. We'll read verse 18 on down a little taste. Yeah, there we go. All right, Sirach chapter 3. Let's start around verse 18. If y'all get some understanding so far, give me a foe up in the chat, man. Give me a foe up in the chat. Let all your people know Kamala Harris is not us. I mean, even if your people don't subscribe to being an Israelite, let them know, look, Kamala Harris ain't black. Like, what? They're going to spill their coffee. You might get put out the house behind it. She's a heathen. She's a heathen that had made a career off the exploitation and incarceration of your people. And she's a direct heir and beneficiary of slavery. Wow. Like my op Pete said earlier, that's why she against reparations. She know, she know that she's not one of us and she would have to pay. That's why. The and uh, y'all make sure remind me to show y'all a husband. <laughs> uh, you can't make this stuff up, boy. I was like, boy, they ain't truly select your leaders. They know the Negro is gonna be simple with it. He gonna eat his ham sandwich and smoke his cigarettes. I'd say get the C for Mali. I'm good on the C for art. Reason I'm good on the seaf is Matthew 1 and 18. Read that to blow your mind, brother. Matthew 1 and 18. Then read verse 25. It'll blow your mind. Dude. That's clearly off. There ain't a version, there ain't another version on the earth that read like that. All right, read that and let me know what you think. 
All right, y'all getting some understanding. Hello, y'all. All right, Sirach 3 and 18. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself. Thou shalt find favor before the most high. Straight up. That's wisdom right there. The greater you get in this thing, the more deeper you get, the more humble you should be. The more humble you should be. Because who don't want to find favor with the Almighty? All right? Many are in high place and of renown. But mysteries are revealed unto the meek. Yeah, many are in these so-called elected offices. High places. Successful black woman, Kamala Harris. Meanwhile, that woman don't even identify with you. She knows she not black. When I say black, yeah, I'm talking about us. You know what I mean? I know we Israelites. I'm just saying. It's for, you know what I'm saying, edification purpose. She knows she ain't one of us. She know it. Straight up, her people's are Irish immigrants. Oh, look, from her three generations back, like her great grandfather and great grandmother. I actually knew. Like, let me see. I met my great grandfather. He he died in ninety four. You feel me? And that was and that was my uh that was my father's. That was my uh my father's grandfather on his father's side. And then I met my great grandmama when she was living in the late 80s before she died. And that was my uh father's grandmother on his mother's side. I'd have met my great grandparents. You did, and that's why I'm saying for Kamala Harris' great grandparents to be straight, you feel me, slave owners. And the biggest sugarcane plantations in Jamaica. You understand? Y'all, that is not ancient history. That's very close. As close as it was for me meeting mines in the early 90s and late 80s. And then I met my, my, my mama, her grandmother, out in Philly. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, both her grandmothers I met before they died. And they died in the mid nineties as well. So me living right now, I met I met one great grandfather and three great grandmothers. You understand? And three great grandmothers during my life. So for her great grandparents to be white Irish heathens and slave owners, you dig, y'all? That is close history. That's close history for her. She knows she ain't one of us. And knows what it says, right? Many are in high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. For the power of the Most High is great, and he is honored of the lowly. Hallelujah. Seek not out things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength. You dig? Certain things, that's why certain arguments I don't even get into. Certain debates, none of that. I'm cool. I'm cool. We'll be arguing all day. Seek not out things that are too hard for thee. Neither search the things that are above thy strength. Brother, it's 360 million square miles on this earth. Yawn. Good for you. I'm glad you know that. And it's 90 something million miles between the earth and the sun. I'm glad you know all that. I'm glad you know all that. But I don't even care if your number's right or wrong. Because the scripture tell me, seek not out things that are too hard for me. Neither search the things that are above our strength. 22. But what is commanded thee? That's what you're supposed to focus on. But what is commanded thee? Think thereupon with reverence. For it, for it is not needful for thee to see with your eyes the things that are in secret. Straight up. Be not curious in unnecessary matters. For more things are showed unto thee than men understand. 24 the dagger for many are deceived by their own vain opinion and an evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment you dig and you can apply that to this whole kamala harris situation you dig the opinion is she's a black woman but many are deceived by their own vain opinion that woman ain't black at all she may have color but so do the majority of the nations in this earth have color. That don't make her an Israelite. That don't make us a quote-unquote black woman. 
And y'all, she ain't no victim of slavery. She's a beneficiary. All right. Last scripture we're going to go to is Sirach 12. Sirach 12, and then we're going to get us a scripture and pray on out. I pray you understand. I just really wanted to go here and just show, you know what I mean? What all this is about. Strong black woman, huh? Successful. So you need to be trying to be like a Kamala Harris. <laughs> uh, who you talking about? The Irish heifer who was a beneficiary of slave or slavery? Boy, you mess around and get put clean out your people house. You go pop up over there talking like that. Proceed with caution. <laughs> Eliyahu, good boy. That's out the seafood. If it is, then jump back to verse 16. You'll see what I'm saying. Yeah, they do call her black, don't they? Yeah, jump back to verse 16, man. And then let me know what you see, brother. Concerning Joseph and Mary. Oh, matter of fact, Marcus Israel just put that out there. Actually, it's verse 16. That's right. Yeah, Matthew 1 and 16. If y'all got a C for Bible, y'all might want to read that. And then ask yourself, is uh was that line up with any other version? <laughs> uh, Baruch, you crazy, man. I already know. You starting arguments. What's wrong with what, Keith? Ah, oh, with the with what Matthew 1 and 18? Nothing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's verse 16 I was referring to. Y'all gotta forgive a brother sometime. I miss fire. You know what I mean? It's all good. I get you. Look, I get you on the block, maybe not just right at the house. You know what I mean? I get you on the right block though. I'll tell you that. Not even the same neighborhood. I get you on the block where it's going down at. Yes, you know. Usually I hit the house. Yeah, the fact that it calls Joseph Mary's father. Yes. 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 Usually I get you right to the house where it's going down there. But if I misfire, I might get you right on the same block. Maybe a, a, a house or two down. It did. Either way, good bread. I ain't peep peep your mom's uh your mom's think Kamala Harris black. Oh <laughs> uh, man. Real talk. Yeah, and then verse 25 say he laid with her. You know what I mean? So one in 16 is calling Joseph her father. And then 25 is saying he laid with her. That's promoting father and daughter six. Yeah, that's incest, utter madness. I'm a Yan Yasha Alamina J. That's right. Some East Indians are darker than us. Me and you. Don't fall for the okie doke, man. Come on now. Yeah, that's incest. All right. Yeah, I got a see for Bible reading Matthew 1 and 16. That's why I don't have one anymore. No, I don't have one. Matter of fact, I never had one. A brother bought it to me and I was reading. Like whenever I anybody bring me a, a, a different version of the Bible, I always read about the birth of the Messiah. Make sure the even the translators of every version are still saying that he's the only begotten son of the heavenly father. That Joseph never begot the Messiah. Yeah, he lay with her afterwards. That's right. After the Messiah was born, Joseph consummated the marriage. Now that's easy work, is what it says. So whenever, and that's how I bumped into it. Every time somebody would bring me, 
I, I start seeing a lot of bruise around here carrying those them thick old bottles. I'm like, what kind of book is that? That deal big. Oh, we got the Enoch, the Jazz, and the Jubilee, the Sefer. I go, oh, okay, let me look at this deal. So I flip right over to Matthew 1, started verse uh, 14, I think it was, and got to 16. I was like, man, what is that? And it did, showed it to the bro. Yeah, showed it to the bro, and he was like, what in the hell is that all that about? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you just showed it, you just gave it to me, thinking it was all good. And then we showed it to a bro that we thought was an elder, and he tried to justify it i'm like look I, you can't justify that you know what i mean no whoever did that translated it wrong this is put it like that and then if you go to bible hub I always remember y'all you can go to biblehub.com and look up any verse in the bible and every translation of it in every translation you did matthew 1 and 16 in every translation none of none of it calls none of it called joseph Mary's father. Now, you think the the publishers of the CIFA don't know that? You think somebody ain't tapped them and said, "Hey, that's a typo right there. You made a mistake." Come on now, people got an agenda. You know what I mean? You did. People have an agenda out here. Because I know if I do a, a certain typo on somebody bring it to me, I'm like, "Oh, good looking, my bad. Let me get that together." That deal is promoting incest, father on daughter relations. I know some of you are like, well, it's just only one scripture. Ruby Margarita is a Bible that, that a lot of brothers carry around called the Sefer Bible. If you read Matthew 1 and 16, it's going to say that Joseph is, was Mary's father, not her husband, her father. And that's a big time publishing company. So it ain't like it wasn't brought to their attention. And then I always ask yourself, well, how many editions been put out since then? Revised editions and all that. And you still didn't make the correction? Yep, and Jacob begot Joseph, the father of Miriam, of whom was born Yahshua, who was called the Mashiach. There it is. There it is. That's why I don't even read out of it. And if somebody like me found it, I'm pretty sure, you know what I mean, the proofreaders of the text before they actually published it saw that. But some, but but the board members voted to what? What they vote? Green light, put it out anyway. Well, that means there's an agenda behind it. What kind of agenda? An agenda of incest. So when you jump down to verse 25, it says they had sex. So nah, I can't, I can't get down with that. All right, so rock 12 and 10. All right, so now that we know about Kamala Harris, right? No, nah, no, nah, it's all good. Huh? It's all good. It's all good. You know what I mean? Well, I, I figured you ain't know when you said it. You know what I'm saying? It's all good, Derek. Salute, my brother. So now that we know Kamala Harris is an enemy, she descends from Irish stock. The beneficiary of the sugar cane, the largest sugar cane plantation in Jamaica. You uh, did. She supports the LGBTQ. She bragged openly bragged about being the first to officiate a same-sex marriage in California, and her incarceration rate as an attorney general in California is higher than the federal government, ninety percent. It says eighty-seven, but it's basically nine out of ten. You did. She's not a victim of slavery. She's a beneficiary. Her mother's a heathen, an East Indian heathen, Elam, according to the Bible. And her fathers are direct heathens, Irish stock, who migrated to Jamaica. All right? So that means she's not one of us. And her morals and ideals don't align with the word of the Mosaic. The... She may look a little, may have a little, what they call melanin or pigmentation, but be not deceived as real. She's an enemy. All right. Sirach 12 and 10. Look, listen to the wisdom, wisdom of the scriptures. What do the scriptures say about your enemy? Never trust thine enemy. 
Never trust thine enemy. What you voting for for if she's your enemy? How you going to vote for if the scripture tell you never to trust him? Never trust thine enemy. For like his iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So just like iron is guaranteed to rust, your enemy is guaranteed to be wicked. Straight up. Straight up, man. So what you going to do? Not listen to the Bible? And then when your enemy strike, then you're going to be like, why? It's going to tell you never trust your enemy. Verse 11, though he humble himself, oh, he humble himself, huh? Speak well and go crouching. Yet take good heed and beware of him. Thou shalt be unto him as if thou had wiped a looking glass, a mirror. And thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. So your enemy is crafty. He'll even front with his words and smile and have you thinking, oh, no, you know what I'm saying? She for us. Oh, so, so, so you didn't figure out something the most I ain't figured out. He just told you don't trust your enemy. Like iron is guaranteed to rust, so your enemy's wickedness will appear. Watch this. Watch this. Set him not by thee. Mm, 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 mm. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at your right hand. Mm. And your enemy is not supposed to be your, your BFF, your best friend. Your right hand is a is a, a position of honor, position of glory. To sit at your right hand is, is someone that's real close to you. Lest he seek to take thy seat, and thou the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent? Facts. Why in the hell would I be sorrowful at a snake charmer? You play with snakes. Why would I be surprised one day if a snake bit him? Why? Who will pity a trauma that is bitten with a serpent or any such as come nigh wild beasts? That's what them that's what them heathens do. Alligator hunters and yeah. They're playing around with lions. That's in the circus. Put your head all in his mouth. Right? And hey, until that deal eats you, now we got a problem. So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins. Who will pity? Who will pity? Ain't nobody going to be sorrowful for you. You set your enemy by you. You start trusting your enemy. And just like no one going to feel sorrowful for a snake trauma if a serpent bite him. No, ain't nobody going to feel sorrowful for you. Why well, don't be sorry for you? Feel sorry for you. For what? You put your enemy next to you. You trusted your enemy. You set him at your right hand. Scripture tell you, curse be the man that trusteth in man. Watch this. For a while he will abide with thee. But if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. As soon as you start declining, he ain't going to be around her. Watch this. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips. But in his heart, he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. It sounds good. The politics, the many blood suckers. Poly is many. Ticks mean blood suckers. Politics mean many blood suckers. An enemy speaking sweetly with his lips. It sounds good. And that's one thing. They didn't study us, the Negro. We were very simple. Oh, man. We the most simplest creatures in existence. It's so quick to forgive and so quick to you know what I mean? So just so quick to let our guards down. So quick. You did so forgetful. Mm. The enemy speaking sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagined how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes. <laughs> but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. That's your enemy. That's your enemy. I'm going to listen to the wisdom of the scripture. I don't, I don't want to be around no heathen. 
hard enough, you can't trust every Israelite. I don't want to be around no evil. I'm good. I'm good. I can't be around every Israelite, so that lets you know. I definitely can't be around no evil, man. I'm cool. I'm staying in the house. Leave me alone. I ain't trying to be around. Obviously, this world is, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's for those that's aligned with it. I'm good. Knows what it says, though. An enemy speaking sweetly with his lips, but in his heart, he imagined how to throw you into a pit. That means it's all false flagging. It's all sorcery with the lips. It sounds good, but his whole mind is to destroy you, to enslave you, to imprison you. How could you trust somebody like that? But you know how smart the most high. Huh? It's like that one Negro that was up there in Bloomington, Indiana, caught himself on the 4th of July, only Negro in some woods with his little heathen friends, and damn near got hung. Them heathens had him pinned to a tree. When you gonna learn, man? Like, what is it gonna take? What is it gonna take? It say right here, he will weep with his eyes pretending, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. And though he pretend to help thee, pretend to like, yet shall he undermine thee. Yeah, because there's opportunity there. If you fall, there's opportunity for him. The whole time he's pretending. Front. He will shake his head, clap his hands, and whisper much, and change his continents. That's why you got to look at actions when you're dealing with folks. Dude, that's amongst Israel, let alone some heathens, man. I'm beyond good. Dude. So what we learned today is that Kamala Harris is a heathen. She's not no Israelite at all. Her mother's East Indian. Her father, Donald J. Harris, is Irish. Irish. He was born in Jamaica to Jamaican immigrants. The big, who just so happened to be, who just so happened to own the largest sugarcane plantation in Jamaica and owned a few hundred slaves. The big, the little bit of melanin that she got in her family come from East India. And then one of her grandmothers was mixed with Irish, East Indian, and a little bit of Negro. That woman is a heathen, and she is a direct beneficiary of slavery, not a victim like us, like the Israelites. We also learn that her morals and ideals don't line up with the scripture. She openly bragged about being one of the first to officiate of same-sex marriage. As attorney general in the state of California. We also learned she's made a career locking up Israel, locking up you Israelites. A career. You did. You heard a pastor earlier say, Miss Lock Up a Brother. He said, Look, she got your case, you dead in court. You going to jail if she prosecuted. Basically, a percentage of nine cases out of 10, y'all, 90%. And that ain't higher than the federal incarceration rate. That's, it's almost there. All right, so she's a heathen. She's for the LGBTQ community. She made a career off of locking us up. And she's a beneficiary, an heiress to slavery, all slave money. And you want to vote for her because of what? Mm, 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 mm. Straight up. All right, let me show y'all her husband real quick before we get up out of here. Then we're going to pick us a song. Matter of fact, I'm going to pick a song real quick. It did. So I just wanted to come on here just for a little taste. Chop it up with the fam. You already know. You already know. All right. We're going to do Psalm the 10th. Psalm the 10th chapter. Pray on our Psalm 10. Show y'all this, this heathen's heathen husband. All right, let me try to find this real quick. 
I get a chance. This right here is funny. I might put this in the post too. I mean, post this in the chat. Joe Biden's most awkward gaffes. Matter of fact, let me play it. I'm putting it in the chat too. Let me play it. This is an idiot here. You got to be an idiot to make Donald Trump look smart. <laughs> Let's play this real quick. Oh, matter of fact, I'm putting it in the chat. Then we can play it. Hold on, yeah. Paste it. All right, this right here is what we about to watch. Y'all check that out. For spare time. This is Joe Bad. Cussing Joe. Barack Obama, Barack America. <laughs> hey man, this dude is an idiot. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States of America, Barack Obama. I can speak out a bit more straightforward. I'm not going to be a male. I, 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 I got something to do. I got to go do boom, boom, boom. Man, what in the hell is he saying? Clinton is qualified or more qualified than I am to be Vice President of the United States of America. Let's get that straight. And quite frankly, um, it might have been a better pick than me, but she's first rate. I know I'm called middle class, Joe. It's not meant as a compliment. means I'm not sophisticated. I want to be clear. I'm not going to be nuts. That's not true. I'm getting things done. That's my brother. To the word United, to the number 30330 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Clone right there. Look at that. Look at this heathen. That heathen look boy a surrogate. Some gallons of gasoline. I mean, billions of uh, two point. I think it's two point three billion dollars worth of. Excuse me, five hundred billion dollars in savings and two point something billion metric tons. CO2 going in the air. Well, folks, eliminate one. Hey, man, he all over the place with his numbers. He's an idiot. Tax loophole out of a trillion six hundred billion worth, a, a trillion four hundred billion worth, out of a billion four hundred billion. I should be a trillion four hundred billion dollars. It's hard to even say it in so much. And by the way, it's cost a lot of money. It cost about seven hundred forty million billion dollars over ten years. Now is the time. To heed the timeless advice from Teddy Roosevelt, speak softly and carry a big stick. End of quote. I promise you, the president has a big stick. Do you hear this, Heath? John, do you want to administer the oath? Man, this heathen just said the president. This heathen just said, I promise you, the president has a big stick. These heathens are faggots. Straight sodomites, man. <laughs> what in the hell? Man. I promise you, he has a big stick. My memory is not as good as Justice Roberts. <laughs> I was a Democratic caucus. You ever been a caucus? No, you haven't. You're a lying dog faced 20 soldier. You said you were, but you're, you're, now you got to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Wealthy kids, black kids. In Delaware, the largest 
largest growth in population is Indian Americans moving from India. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. That's a point. I'm not talking about Chuck Graham, state senator, is here. Chuck, stand up. Chuck, let him see you. God love you. What am I talking about? Look, look, this guy's an idiot, man. Look, he say the, he say the Senator Chuck Graves is here. Hey, Chuck, stand up. <laughs> hey, man, Ch Chuck Graves is the senator that's wheelchair bound. <laughs> he don't want to stand up. Man, this dude is a straight up heathen, man. A milk toast heathen from the Nordic ice cap. That's right, Agdino. I tell you what, you're making everybody else stand up, old pal. Thank you very, very much. And his mom uh, lived in uh, in Long Island for 10 years or so. Uh, God rest her soul. And uh, um, although she's making mom's still, mom's still alive. That nigga said his mama lived in Long Island 10 years ago. God, God rest her soul. Oh, hold on. She's still alive. It's your fault. This dude is a complete. Idiot, man. God bless her soul. I agree that everybody wants to in five issues in my time. So. Thank you, Vice President. Yeah, so you know, that's what you be getting. Hey, hey y'all, and again, it's bad business if you make Donald Trump look like a time you make Donald Trump look like a genius boy. You it's bad pickings. All right, y'all, we about to pray on now. Y'all look up Kamala Harris' husband. That's your homework. You'll see. You bump right into him. He's a, he's another milk toast heathen from the Nordic Ice Caps. It's crazy, man. All right, y'all, we about to pray on out. Psalms, the 10th chapter. Let's face your rules, man. Humble our hearts. Humble our minds. Thank the most high, man, for another Shabbat. Make sure y'all get y'all some rest. I know I'm about to. You know what I mean? All right, power slam, my little, my youngest son, this little joke of amps. Uh, you yeah, gonna sit back and rest a little taste. Continue to pray for us and continue to pray for y'all. You know what I mean? That's right, Pete. You said we thought Bush was the toy. I know, boy. Hey, boy, little cousin Joe. Man, look. Y'all, this deal mess around and get invaded today. He. The day he get elected president, this dude best want to get invaded that day. You know what I mean? Straight up. <laughs> uh, and then this vice president is a straight heat. Oh, man. Straight heat. All oh, praise and glory now to the most high. I just face Jerusalem, y'all. Humble our hearts. Pray that the Most High redeem Zion swiftly and soon and render to our enemies a righteous judgment. You understand? Uh, make sure y'all stay vigilant out here in these hours. Very vigilant. Big uh, article came out to where they gonna be, you know what I mean? Either jailing you or finding you if you refuse the so-called coronavirus vaccine. So. It's a lot of hard decisions that you're gonna have to make. For some of us, it ain't even hard. Decision already made. You know what I mean? So uh the days that we are living in is prophetic. Your eyebrow deep in it. You can either call a spade a spade or uh keep continuing to live in a la la land. You understand? Scripture tell us to watch as well as pray, stay vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Well, we are at war. We are not on vacation. We are at war. We are not in the kingdom. All right, so get yourself together. Don't fall for the okie You know what I mean? All right. All right, Psalm the 10th chapter. For the most high submission. If you're a man, I'm cover your head. If you're a woman, cover your head. So in the first Corinthians, the 11th chapter, praying and prophesying, meaning to uncover, one another cover. Uh, 
Amos 6, chapter 1 through 10, 1 Kings 8, 40 through 58. Give us the instructions to face the land that we were brought from. We know we are the children of Israel. Without flinching, Israel is still the crown of Africa, Northeast Africa, next to Egypt to this very day. That's the land we brought from. So we face east, not because we Muslims and not because we imposter Jews. We are the children of Israel, Israelites, however you want to call it. That floats your fancy. Uh, we are not a religion, we are a people. You understand? The promised seed scattered, soon to be redeemed. By the only begotten son of the most high. Yeah. The heavenly host. And in the world to come, we dictate policy. Yeah. So our prayers go right now. You know what I mean? You know, you know the song, Oh Happy Day. Oh, happy day. <laughs> yes, it will be in that day. You know what I mean? This right here, y'all can have this. It matters. All right. Also, 1 Timothy 2 and 8 and uh, 1 Kings 8, 54, till it's spread forth our hands. So cover or uncover, you know what I mean? Direction is east. Or if you, you may be east of Jerusalem, face west. Or you may be south of Jerusalem, face north, face Jerusalem. That's the whole point. Spread forth your hands. All right. Psalm, the 10th chapter. The most High's permission. Why standest thou far off, O Yah? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. That's right. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the most high abhorreth. The wicked through the pride of his continence will not seek after Yah. The most high is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He have said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Look at the proudness of this heathen. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He, seated, he sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He hath said in his heart, Yah have forgotten. He hath said in his heart, Yah have forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. Arise, O Yah, O Elohim. Lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked condemn, contemn Yah? He have said in his heart, Thou will not require it. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite to requite it with thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break thou the arm of the wicked. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness to thou find none. Yahweh is king forever and never. The heathen are perished out of his land. Hallelujah. The most I have heard the desire of the humble. Thou will prepare the heart. Thou will cause thine ear to hear, to judge the fatherless and the oppressed. That the man of the earth, that the man of the earth, that the man of the earth may no more oppress. Hallelujah. Say la. Yo. Our praise is glory and honor to the most high. Ooh, we that Psalm 10 went hard. That Psalm 10 went hard, boy. What do you say? Break the arm of the wicked. That's right. 
All right, y'all, until the next time. Y'all willing we'll to be back live in a few hours. Oh, man, I'm about to sit back, relax a little bit, rest, continue to pray for honor and humility as we continue to pray for y'all. Don't be deceived in this hour. And the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of Yah guide you all in your thoughts, your speech, and your actions, and everything that the Most High may manifest in your life. You feel me? Not only in this world, but the world to come. Yah will not give it y'all later. Pray for us as we continue to pray for y'all. Yahoo!